Okay, so let's get slowly started. Hello. Hello. Welcome on our next talk. Uh, there's no external audio, so please be quiet and don't sound door if you're leaving. And you can vote for uh, lighting talks before D in front of the D. 105 Community a distri uh, community distribution of OpenStack, which I have this beautiful T-shirt. There are many like questions about what these what these letters mean, but the first one is definitely not Red Hat. So it's a uh, community OpenStack distribution. We actually open opened up entire thing about a year ago. It was running on internal infrastructure, but now the whole op uh, packaging process is open. You can you can contribute uh, right now as you sit here. First step would be to come to our ER IRC channel and to have a chat with us. But now any person can be part of RDO of our distribution. And actually, OpenStack is a really big project, and we we are packaging uh, really lots of packages. And when I when I started. Uh, about three years ago, it was basically one dude uh, shuffling manually packages on the like repo server. It was pretty horrible, and so from that time we moved uh, all the fix all the things forward. We now have a continuous integration and whatnot. And my personal contribution to this process of making packaging of RDO better is RDO PKG. It is a it is a tool I. Am I have been writing for the past three years. Nobody asked me to write the tool. I just was like doing the packaging and some tasks were repetitive and boring. Like upgrading a package to new version would take like 30 minutes of git commands I wrote so many times over and over again. So I just simply got pissed and also lost my keyboard focus probably. Ah. Okay. Sorry. All right, so <clears throat> let's get up with the presentation. First, I I'm sorry, uh, like my teeth are reconfiguring in a weird way, so I'm barely able to speak and I wasn't able to prepare as much as I wanted for the presentation. So I hope it will fit the format and your time will be productively spent. So first, the theoretical part I will show you, if you, if you are still interested in not leaving the room after this, uh, I will show you the examples of RDO PKG. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't been able to like properly prepare this part, the practical one, so I will do what I do every day in the job and hope it will work. If it will break, at last you will see how I use Radio PKG to fix it. So first, the prepared part, that is some basic information. So uh, actually RPM, uh, Radio PKG is uh, basically a collection of packaging scripts. Uh, it is a packaging automation tool. It can do many things I found boring or like I was not willing to do them again. So I basically, any other packager would write a script and there are actually many packaging scripts out there. Practically every packager has its own set of scripts. So I try to kind of centralize this. Uh, uh, RDO PKG already has some users. I am the main user of course because I'm, I'm a lazy person. But I made some other people, like for example, Heikel use it. He's like the power user. And these like packager warriors are like slaying the problems by thousand use it's, it's immense power, or so I would hope. Uh, it is my main project, although I wasn't explicitly tasked to write it. I thought that this tool is absolutely necessary should we move somewhere with RDO, because the sheer amount of packages is huge and like instead of in investing the manpower into maintaining the packages, we should invest the manpower into improving the tools and moving the tools forward so that humans are only needed in situation when the human superpowers are required. So most of the time when I was like raging on my work, it, wa it wasn't necessarily something a machine couldn't do. So I wanted to fix this. So uh, earlier PKG is written in Python. I wrote it... Uh, I wrote it with other people's in mind, so I hope if you would like to uh, use it or you would like to contribute, it should be a pleasant experience. If I'm wrong, please prove me wrong. And 
uh, now is it 4,200 lines of Python, so that would be like uh, lots of shell scripts, probably not well organized if I choose to go by that way, but this is like modular Python. You can reuse it, uh, you can reuse it as a Python module. There is, I hope, nice CLI. There is even, um, I invented this way to describe a CL command line interface and the module interface in one, uh, in one declarative structure. So there are, I also stole like the good habits, things I liked from OpenStack projects and all from all the Python projects. It, it was kind of my playground, so I tried to do it really well so that people would uh, like to contribute to it. And there are some actually contributions already. There are some users, so I guess it's not a complete waste of time. So, but why? Yeah, I, I actually talked about this. So my uh, main motivation behind RDO Pikichi would be to duplicate effort because like, uh, <clears throat> there are a few people who do like astonishing amount of work, right, Eichel? Uh, in the packaging, and if these people are given proper tools, they can do even even greater amount of work or the same amount of work without being pissed too much about it. So I think when, when I entered, it was really a chaos, and I needed to check out which people use which scripts and stuff <laughs> like that, and there was a huge amount of like non-trivial knowledge, uh, caveats in tools, like, for example, one would think that RPM, libRPM, and spec file, spec file should be a declarative file, but after some time and lots of lost hours, you discover that certain commands like work in a weird way and when you swap their uh, order, it doesn't work anymore. And there is like pitfalls in the RPM packaging tools all over. Uh, lots of them are old, so I wanted to provide a wrapper on top of this. Hello. Uh, to, to make this less pain. So we have uh, RPM, which is a legacy, legacy thing. Uh, it works for its purpose and there would be no, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to rewrite it, it just works. So uh, my solution to that problem of old code and this is to provide new fresh code on top of that uh, that like shields you from the crap of the old. So that's, I, well, that's what I hope RDO PKG is about. Uh, so RDO PKG has many features. Basically when I was packaging OpenStack, uh, I'm, I was packaging all the client libraries. Uh, most of the OpenStack projects has also like the uh, Python dash project client library, which contains the, uh, like the Python module and the command line module. That's obsolete, but doesn't matter. I maintain quite a lot of similar packages simply. And I was performing tasks on them and they were very similar. So this is the core feature of RDO PKG that you should be interested in if you are packagers, even if you're not packaging RDO. These features should be usable by any, uh, any RPM packager. And I hope to actually uh, uh, split these uh, features from the RDO PKG in future to make this kind of standard because I really, I really think, I really think uh, this should be the lowest, uh, the, the tools are working a lower level than it's necessary now. So I would like to move the tool chain a step further, a level higher. So there are a few, there are a few uh, conventions you need to stick with, but when you stick with, I hope, pretty same conventions, RDO PKG gives you the power to perform the basic packaging operations quickly. Most notably, there are three scenarios when packaging, when you're modifying a package, and these are listed here. Each one has one RDO PKG action which should help you get that action done as quickly as possible. So first and simplest is basically you just want to um, edify something in this, uh, mod modify something in the spec file. So you would actually probably use RPM def spec bump or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is no big deal, but RDO PKG actually, we'll get to examples later. Solve this even with a little bit less effort, but that's not the interesting part. Interesting part uh, comes when you are introducing patches because um, hmm, I guess I guess I'll deep I'll de I'll dive into this later during the examples. So uh, there is this core uh, patches management functionality. <laughs> Rio Pikachu introduces some. So you already have a Git repository where your spec file and other files to create package lives, right? It's called dist Git. Uh, Fedora, all Fedora packages uh, live in dist Git. So it's a Git repository with spec file and all the else. So what I don't like about it is the fact that the patches are stored there as a simple files. So when a new package version is released, 
uh, you would just try if your spec file doesn't work with the new version, right? But sometimes it doesn't because the patches fail to apply and whatnot. So we have Git already, so why don't you use Git to do what it does best, which is rebasing and moving patches around. So there is... Oh, yeah, sorry, Let, let's talk about during the examples. So there is this core, uh, core feature, uh, core features about patches management, but there is also lots of different stuff we found that is kind of specific for RDO. And um, for example, uh, there is some advanced requirements .txt uh, management handling. So OpenStack projects chose to store their uh, packaging requirements in requirements.txt files. And, uh, but for us, this is kind of redundant because we are the distribution. Uh, RDO is the distribution and we provide the distribution as a whole. So we want to handle requirements ourselves, but most of the time they're actually right. So we want to have a way to compare the spec file which contains our requirements to the upstream. Uh, so there, are, there is some functionality uh, about that. Uh, there are some build system frontends. Uh, we were building uh, RDO packages uh, all over in Copper, in Koji. Now we build them in CentOS build system, so there were frontends for that. Uh, then we have a metadata for RDO. For the packages, it's just a simple YAML file with all the information. It's kind of shady, but it works. And so RDO PKG provides front-end and browser uh, for this, for browsing the info. For example, uh, I, can, I can show you, I guess. On some... <coughs> Yeah. So, for example, you can see uh, for Python Nova client package, uh, you can see where is its upstream, where its patches branches live, where the disk git lives, which releases are supported, and who maintains them. So, there are literally when I found something that would be worth automating, and uh, it wasn't done already, so I searched for it and I found no solution. I put it into RDO PKG. So that's why it's pretty big now, and actually, and actually, I need to split it. So currently, you can use RDO PKG, and I uh, encourage you. I think like Seth, Seth dude, Seth is using RDO PKG to package. They even have some like uh, issues open on GitHub. More and more people are uh, using it. So. Basically, when is the use case when you want to use it? It is when you have a, when you're chasing upstream project that is pretty fast, releasing often, and you need to, you need to maintain downstream patches. There are lots of projects that fit this description, I believe. So when this is, when this is the case, you, you really want to use RDO PKG and, uh, but it's kind of big, there's lots of requirements, it does lots of weird stuff and it's not middleware enough, so I need to, I need to fix it before like, it gets too many users. Yeah, like, so now, now is the last time to fix it because too many people start to use it and I can't change anything. So I get this crazy plan to actually split it into three parts. One of, one of them would be Pound CLI, which would be a beautiful modular CLI framework. Actually, I don't know, maybe you can help me if this exists, but I was trying, because for example, OpenStack client, which loads all other uh, OpenStack like client libraries, when you run it in command line, it takes a second, second of Python imports. So that's a no for me. I don't want to wait a second for my CLI to finish one action. It's loading, like most of the modules it, lo it loads are unnecessary to load because just a subset, so that's completely no. There is Stevedor in OpenStack, but it has unreasonable dependencies. So I chose to create this simple schema where when you have a Python module and it's in it, there is just this like descriptive structure that like describes its entry points, like how, uh, how to call it from command line and how to interact it uh, from the other modules on top level. There is some convention again on that, but it's a simple one. You, you, you look at it and you would understand it. Uh, so thanks to that, only this information is read on module load, but when you actually want to use something from the module, then it gets imported. So this is, uh, there are some few like nice and uh, nice exceptions, nice errors. Uh, I got, uh, of course, important part is wrapping uh, system calls because lots of the lots of the RDO PKG commands is actually just calling system commands. So it's using fat PKG and all the tools you would use manually. It just does it for you. So if you would choose to drop RDO PKG, you just return to whatever you were doing before your scripts or someone else's scripts. So it's not like forcing itself somewhere and like then like locking you to use it. It's just like this like extra automation thing you can but don't have to use. 
at any time. So one part of that would be the modular CLI framework. Then on top of that would be Pound PKG, which is what you should hopefully might be interested in. Uh, that is the that is the patches management. So I will take everything from RDO PKG that I think would be useful to a generic packager who is not affiliated with RDO project or just he's just like packaging his packages, maintaining his patches. Uh, so I would like to put everything in there for such a person to make his life easier. So that's Pan PKG. And finally, RDO PKG would be on top of that and contain only our like weird RDO specific functionality that most of you are probably not interested about. So uh, whatever part of the RDO PKG are you interested in, I hope you should be able to get it in a, a small package as possible. So now, there is only a manifest on GitHub, no code to show you yet because it's quite a big, big byte and I'm going on the lines if you want to do something proper, do it yourself. So I will first try to do it best I can and once I'm happy with it, I will like uh, release it and hope to other people to make it even better. So basically, <clears throat> I'm not the first, yeah, I'm not sure how to, well, the, f the thing is when I was, when I was doing the Koji, uh, Koji I, was I wanted a simple thing. I wanted to pass Koji a package and I wanted to monitor it. Uh, so I would expect something like these lines of code here, but in fact it was like over 130 lines of hex. I'm not sure if I, if you even want to see the file. Do you want to see the file, like how horrible the code is? Yeah, you want to see it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. Uh, so the, Probably the greatest thing is that the fedpkg commands class, uh, it, it is like, a, it requires uh, non-optional arguments, like, but they, they are not especially named, it's just like a list of arguments. But the funny thing is, these arguments are actually read from a config file and then manually like split and sent to the function. And of course, this is the gut function, like it can, it encompasses whole universe and much more and uh, uh, class, sorry, got class. So if you actually uh, manage to somehow instantiate it, which is not very clear how to do, like uh, even the examples in the module, like in the main file of the module are wrong, uh, then you need to mock out some things of it in order to work. For example, uh, wait. Oh yeah, uh, the, the loggers are hard coded into the class, so you need to somehow set that up. Oh, here, yeah, you, you need to stub up some random things from the gut class to actually be able to use it because I have no idea like how you do. And then there is this like config no section error returned when you press control C and like things like this. It's, it's really horrible. And actually when I started writing earlier PKG, of course I was looking at already existing tools. I was like, oh my God, people needed to solve this so many times before. I'm not the first one trying to solve this in a proper way, right? So either that's not true or I failed my search because I also met some people who had this like this cool functionality in mind they would like to see and they were looking for the right tool where to put it, right? So my first guess would be FedPKG because I, I used it and like FedPKG update updates your package, FedPKG SRPM, SRPM gives you SRPM, it's pretty like simple, nice thing. So no, like I opened that code, I tried to how to interactivate, how to reuse the functionality and just know. And I also met other persons who are interested in Pound PKG and Radio PKG for the same reason, because they really wanted to contribute, but it is a old legacy code, and I'm not, I'm not like blaming, it's just like it needed to be written, and it's written and it's kind of working, but it's not pleasant to contribute to. Just like for me, I was looking at the code for some time, and I was just like, no, not gonna do that. So my goal would be to, to provide a code that is not horrible to contribute to. So, my goal now is, uh, once I will do this split, uh, Palm PKG then would be what uh, this presentation is about. Earlier PKG is our like niche, uh, interesting stuff. But Palm PKG, I would hope it to be like a standard of the packaging. Uh, if you are maintaining lots of patches, I hope that Palm PKG would be the way you do it. And it's non-intrusive, so that should be pretty okay. So once that is done, uh, hmm. 
Yeah, I, I don't want to force people to like look forward something that's not written and so so I will write the code, I will rewrite all the tools and then I will present these as a, like examples that it's worth it. And then I want to convince the people who maintain or are interested in rewriting other tools using this. If it proves to be worth it, maybe I'm just like egoistic and this is complete bullshit, we'll see. And but but I think it's really better than what is there. So, for example, I would like FedPKG, CentOS PKG, uh, RH PKG, and all these tools that are, from my point of view, not very pleasant to contribute to rewritten if this, should this prove to be sufficient improvement. So that's my secret plan. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, if, you, if you find it interesting, feel free to go to, like, contact me because I'm serious. I would really try to do this. And I think most of these tools were actually written by a few people with enough motivation and ambition. So I think if I found such people, it could be done again, but better in a way that other people can contribute. But th because this is a huge letdown, like how many people had this awesome feature that could already be in FedPKG and they were turned out by the code, like simply because it wasn't fun. So I think this is a serious problem which I'd like to solve. <clears throat> but now let's go to the examples. So. Uh, I wasn't really sure about the format of this, so I would... How many people of you are maintaining a RPM package in Fedora or somewhere else? That, and, to, and also it has more than one downstream patch, usually. Yeah, okay. So if you, if you would be interested, I would go into like, start with your package disk git and like modify it to... It's not modified, set up your git remotes properly so you can use RDO package on your package and see if it helps. Would you like to do that or? No? <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> so first get RDO package. I was warned the internet is horrible, but so see for yourself. Uh, thanks to Martin, <laughs> we have, we, uh, you can simply use DNF to just copy and install it. So, uh, you can see RDU PKG readme for a wide variety of options. You can you can just git clone it and uh, Python set up by develop user. You can pip install even. But I would, uh, if I were you, I, I would just use Copper. So, <coughs> so DNF Copper enable Yeruzitska slash RDU PKG and then DNF install RDU PKG. So how many of people of you are trying this right now. Okay, that's that's not really because I, I won't do I would I would hate to do like interactive presentation when no one's doing it. I can like I can be blubbering if no one's gonna do it. Sorry? Do it live. Okay. So anyway, tr try to try to get earlier PKG if you want. Um, I will explain the conventions now which I was talking before. So, we have the disk git, that is a well-known thing. Uh, it is just a git repository with all that is needed to create a RPM package, which is most importantly spec file, but it might be other files such as patches and service files and whatever else is not included in the upstream turbo that you need to... So, uh, when working with Fedora package, you would just do fedpkg clone to get the disk git. If you would want to, for example, have your own package in copper or wherever else, you could just use any Git repository you want and have your spec file. For example, RDO PKG has the spec file in its own repo, so it's kind of like, <laughs> it's this Git and the upstream source at once that's also supported. Uh, so, this is the simple thing. But next convention that is important and that's the it's a simple thing, but I think if all the packages would follow this, it would be much simpler. It is a convention that we follow in RDO, <coughs> and that helped us immensely throughout the time to not get mad from all this uh, inflow of patches. So there is RDO packaging documentation, which I also wrote, and there is, it is explained here. So uh, imagine in Fedora, the latest package now, when you, when you clone it, actually, let me, let me try to do that here.
you can see earlier PKG just thrown an error message at me. Notice it uh, told me which git, which shell command uh, it used and what was the standard error. So this is the approach I like to take. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm just using the tools and the real PKG provides the glue between the tools that you probably already use. Okay. So RDO PKG clone is one of these RDO specific uh, commands that actually did all the free slides I will be presenting to you for me. It cloned the federalist git. It also cloned the patches branch, which for RDO at least, this is a convention, Red OpenStack slash uh, project name. Uh, let me show you how this looks actually. Oh, this is too little screen space. Okay, so notice there are, uh, there are branches and there is one branch for each OpenStack release. That's, that's kind of changing now, but let's just, doesn't matter. I, I would like to, this to be like generic. So this is patches branches for Python Nova clients for our RDO package. And for each, um, for each release, it basically, <coughs> let me show you. Yeah, it contains, it's not very well visible on GitHub. Look at Juno. All right, so in this branch, this is basically a upstream tree. So this is what upstream Python Nova client has in their uh, repository up to a version tag. So that is the upstream repository up to a version which is packaged. And if I uh, if I wasn't maintaining any patches, it would be just an exactly that. In that case, the patches branch would be meaningless and it wouldn't exist. But it would be just up to that. When I want to maintain uh, downstream patches, instead of having these static files somewhere in the test git, these are actually maintained as patches using git, which is for, uh, I think for which git is really cool. So I use the right tool for the job. So there is this runtime dependency on Python PBR. Oh, Python PBR brought so much pain into our world, like so meta. No, anyway, uh, this, this patch is actually downstream only. It's our patch which I created and this patch on top of it use useless things instead of useless things. Oh, this is the same thing. So these are two downstream patches but I could also have upstream patches so I would uh, for example like to cherry pick something from upstream. So all the patches that are on top of the, on the package are maintained through git. So not as patches files. This for example means, oh, actually We'll get, we'll get to that later. So th this is patches branch. It is just a branch of upstream with the patches, uh, with RPM, with the package, uh, X specific patches on top of it. This is a convention. Another convention also states that this must end with dash patches. So if you have, for example, for Fedora, if you would be like packaging the latest, greatest bleeding edge package, uh, the disk it would be named master, right? For the old round, it would be F23, F24, etc. So the simple convention says that the patches branch, wherever it lives, it must be named like that, plus the dash patches. So if you have master, master patch, master, master dash, dash patches will contain the patches for the master branch and so on. So this is a schema for maintaining the patches in Git. And then it's just a matter of configuring your local repository, right? So that RDO PKG can find the patches branch. Once that is done, it can manipulate the patches branch for you. Uh, that includes uh, mirroring the, or like syn synchronizing the patches from the patches branch to the disk git. Uh, so now, now the patches branch is authoritative source of the patches. Disk git only like uh, has a mirror of these, just aesthetic files, but they're not maintained in the disk git uh, at all. RDO PKG updates them automatically on new version or uh, on update. So these are patches branches. This, this is the important concept. We kind of it is actually an emergent thing, which we kind of need it. We, we are like understaffed and we are engineers, so we are, you know, solving stuff with as little work as possible 
and this is what like emerged. This just like made our work easier. So maybe it will make your work easier as well. Maybe not, but it's definitely worth worth looking. Uh, <coughs> so oh, there is also this diagram: patches branch workflow. So we choose this workflow where there is uh, upstream repo, and then we just like uh, maintain our patches branch, which is basically the upstream repo with our patches on top. And we just git rebase these patches when new upstream version is released. And we cherry pick new patches when we want to, for example, backport or introduce some patches that are, for example, when it often happens that uh, something is released and two days after some super important feature hits, uh, hits the repo. And so we want that feature in, so we just backport it, someone wants it. So it gives you uh, flexibility to, to do whatever, to maintain whatever patches. There is also a mechanism I wouldn't want to go too deep into, which allows you to like separate downstream and upstream patches. Uh, and finally, RDO PKG is the one that makes sure uh, this git is up to date. So this git contains only the spec file now after this like change, but patches are actually maintained in a git branch instead of the file. So advantages of this are many. The greatest and obvious one is when a new uh, version of your software comes out and you have really lots of patches in your disk git, if there was some like change uh, on the lines you changed, probably the patches will fail. But if the RDO PKG with, with the extra information it has, uh, it can just rebase and git knows its patches and uh, since the same git tree is used, most of the time you don't need to do anything. You just write RDO PKG new version and you just like uh, you just look if the result is what you wanted. Usually it is. The worst case is that the rebase is failing. That means that upstream introduced the new version, changed the layout, and your patches are not up to date anymore. So you just uh, resolve the rebase as you would always, and then tell RDO PKG to continue with its stuff. So back to the presentation. <laughs> so this is patches branch. Finally, finally, this is a so RDO PKG works with the this git which is origin remote and uh, and second convention is that the patches branch should be named uh, the remote should be called patches and the patches branches should have same name as the this git they are associated with plus dash patches and finally this one is not a strong one it's just uh, for some bonus functionality when you add the upstream remote uh, with the upstream git project then RDO PKG is able to fetch latest upstream version for you so you can, for example, when you have set this like this, you can do RDO PKG new version without any parameters, <laughs> since RDO PKG, I really try hard to make it configuration less, con uh, convention over configuration. I really hate configuration, and I think that states are the like doom of programming, so I always uh, evade state when I can. And so if you, this is the only set you need to take care of. This is your, your Git repositories, your remotes. Uh, instead of having crazy configuration, uh, RDO PKG forces you to use this convention, but as a result, you don't need to configure anything and it should just work. So, this is how your remotes should look. Actually, <coughs> let me show you how to. So, this is this git from Fedora, Patches branch. For us, it's on Reddit OpenStack. You can have it anywhere. Actually, if you would have your own this git, like not using Fedora or CentOS, if you would do, for example, your copy repository, your personal repo, or something like that, you could even have these both in one repo. You could have the disk git and the patches branch in one. Uh, it should be supported. And the upstream, so now, for example, I should be able to do this. Okay, so this is Python Nova Client package. It's currently at version 241, but upstream is already at 320. So you already have some like small bits of functionality. It can tell you, I, it, actually, if I, if I uh, went to this directory and I have lots of them, these are the packages I sometimes like interact with. Uh, I just go to the directory and do git fetch all, oh, sorry. And this is the only like non RDO PKG command. Rest should be one to two RDO PKG command to solve most of the things that I ever want to solve with the package. Uh,
Yeah, so this git branch is master, local patches branch is master patches, remote patches branch is patches slash master patches. It is various detections and it tries to be really smart so you don't have to think because it hurts. And uh, when you set up things in a way it expects, it will be right. If you don't do it, it will just break and it will tell you like, oh, I don't know how to tell this parameter, you need to tell me somehow or set it up correctly. It should be non-destructive. Like uh, always when you run RDO PKG action, the result should be a commit in your disk git. And you just like inspect it if the work is good enough. On, if it's not good enough, you use your monkey super brain and fix it to be even better. Uh, so this looks, uh, this tells me I've set it up properly. F. So let's go finally to the examples. Simplest things, imagine I want to do some uh, simple fix. You would probably use RPM death bump spec for this. So let's see how it's with RDO PKG. <coughs> okay, action required, edit spec as needed and describe changes in the change log. Fair enough, man. So I do not like, hmm, what I do not like. Yeah. I need I need white space here. I need I need more space. So Okay, so you actually updated the version or it will be all. Sorry, sorry. So you updated the version of the package or it will be all. Uh yeah 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 yeah. I will show you, I will show you. Give me a second. Uh yeah, yeah. good question, but uh so yeah it, it already uh, it already produces changelog entry. It takes uh it takes my credentials from git. So if uh, if there is no like parameter passing, no configuration, you just set up your git correctly. <coughs> Same way when you're using SSH, it relies on your SSH config as opposed to introducing its own variables and like things to configure. So always trying to use the already existing tools. So it prepared nice change log for me. I actually have script for that. It's called RPM ch, like ch, which uh, puts this line into my clipboard and then I paste it. That's how I did it before. But now RPG does this ugly part for me and I just really enter the change log line, which is I need more space. Let's assume it's actually linked to some bug. Okay, that's done. Yep, and it's done. So now Ario PKG shows you uh, what it did. It bumped a release, since this is a just a spec file fix. It's not a new version or anything, so it just bumped release. There are my two changes and my change log. But now notice that it also generated a nice commit message. It's called I need more space. The commit message is generated from change log. So that's one more step, uh, one more like extra chore that you don't need to do. And it also quotes the, all the bugs referenced. So if this used in certain workflow, <laughs> uh, that can be very helpful. But uh, so, yeah. Sorry, uh, which one? No, no, no. Yeah, actually, that, that's a good question. So that's that's uh, straight uh, straightforward con converting from a package to RPM, right? There is no spec file on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm also doing documentation. I will like uh, answer you broadly, but uh, I've seen this many times. Uh, this kind of automatic conversion, I've seen automatic documentation. Uh, this automatic, con uh, ideally, it should be automatic. Like everything should be automatic unless there's explicit need to, right? That's the like perfect state I'm going. But not always the automation brings good results, and often it is like worse than nothing. For example, auto document, uh, in OpenStack there is lots of auto-generated auto documentation, it's crap. Like I, I just rewrote it manually. Uh, same with the, if all the pip projects, if it would be like one lovely place when everyone respects conventions and looks how other people do it and tries to do it <laughs> as the other people do, it would be great, but the reality isn't as such. Even in OpenStack, which is like a one like banner for all these projects and it sh they should be all the same, it's not true. Like half of my work here is like, solving special edge cases well these people like all of the people have tags like number that number what number but guess what Seth has also v in the beginning and you know there are these small differences here and there which makes this impossible and in the end 
uh, like you want most of the stuff automated, but you want to have a way to do it manually when the automatic part fails. It should be easy. So if if this package uh, like maintained by this with this tool, what you mentioned, if the result is not uh, to your liking, what would you do? Basically, if you let the tool to generate your spec file, then you can spec it manually, check if it makes sense, because you need to ah. take the, take the uh, packaging guidelines in mind. Yeah, but so, so it's a one-shot tool, like you once generate the spec file and then you maintain it manually? Yeah, but, uh, ah. but I, I actually opened the feature request, I already implemented the feature that would enable mm -hmm. you to show the diff, and if, so that you let the tool to generate the spec file for you, then you do some manual changes, and when the new version arrives, you just uh, let the tool to generate the diff, which could be applied on the mm -hmm. so that, for example, if the yeah. requirements are changed and the version is changed, that could be changed yeah, so most of the functionality is already in area PG, what you're talking about. <laughs> but but yeah, it could be it could it, I'm sure actually parts of it are they are all over the place. Like this is heavy like lots of effort is duplicated in this. Like lots of people are doing this, so I want to provide like a central way. Uh, yeah, so we have kinda of this one template that is like made with love by, by our packagers, which we try to just copy all over the projects. So that's why we don't use the generator because we already have template for it. But RDO PKG changes the specs as a developer would, like only the smallest changes, and there are tools to like inspect it, to inspect the requirements changes and stuff like that. But I, there is certain level of automation that is too much, like that is my experience. So I like to, even this tool, it can be used to fully automate the process, but still it should be just a something on top, not, not, like, not like something required to actually get it done. So, if you would like drop a new PKG and then went to just like maintaining your spec file manually, it should be fine. Uh, how much time is there? Yeah, okay. So th this was a simple fix. Notice that I run one action and now the result is is a commit. The result of my operation is a commit and uh, if I don't like it, I just kill it with fire. Right. And we are where we are. So that was fixed. Next, that's that's boring, really. But it's still better than Airbnb dev bounce back, I think, <laughs> like slightly better. Okay, so now where the when the interesting part comes. So let's see the disk. Mm, there, there are no patches here. Okay. Ah, oh, there are some patches. Alrighty, so this is F22 branch of Python non client package, so this is uh, Fedora 22 package basically that you can, you can download if you're using Fedora 22. Uh, Alright, so the patches branch is stable Juno, this is some area PKG auto magic, like this is magic, but it can tell. Uh, so let me show you the... How does stable, stable Juno? So there are these two package again, uh, remove runtime dependency, change something somewhere. So these are two patches. Uh, imagine I would want to introduce a new patch from upstream onto this branch. So, I'll switch to stable Juno now. And then I'll just cherry pick the patch from, from upstream, which should be upstream master. Which one? I don't know. For example, document this parameter. Oh yeah, it applied, great. So now I have uh, this, this extra patch on top of my patches branch and Presentation I can see. Alright, 
So I run one, I added the patch to the git. That is a thing of your workflow. So actually we use the workflow that we used, the workflow where there is, there is some workflow that gives you um, that gives you the patches to your patches branch, so you could have some Garrett, some code review, you could just push the patches as you, as you want. If you're like the master packager, you're too, good, too awesome for processes, you can just push them. That's your, that's your thing, but once the patches are in the patches branch and earlier package knows where it is, it can just time it. So I just cherry picked, right? I just git cherry picked the patch I wanted. And then I run one earlier PKG command, and this is the result. It bumped the release, it generated the patch, it added the patch, it even added the like patch apply options. It can also it can understand the modern modern ways of applying uh, RPM patches, like git through git apply and the other one which I don't even remember. It generated nice uh, change log. So done. The introducing the new patch should be done with this one gone. Uh, Imagine I would I would like to imagine I would like to also reference Bugzilla, so I'll open the spec file and I don't know. This is some random stuff. RHBZ one two three and this is RHBZ six nine nine whatever. RDU PKG amend. It's basically like git commit amend dash a, but it regenerates the commit message from the change log. So this commit message looks exactly like the change log does. And so finally, th this shouldn't be updated with patch. I seriously need to fix the presentation. I don't actually do it right now because. Hmm. I haven't used it for a while, actually. Okay, it's fixed. Yay. Uh, okay. Finally, the most the most useful action. I'm not sure if I will be able to to do a proper example. Let's try actually. So. This is the most useful. This is the most useful one, and this action took me most time, and I was doing it manually. Uh, this is when the new new version of a package is released. So, in the lucky case, when when you have the patches stored in this git as flat files, you can get lucky, and the patches still apply even on the new version. So that's awesome, and you don't need to worry about anything. But when you have like 40 patches, like certain projects, the chances are that some of them will not apply. So. You, you need to git rebase, do it anyway. So, Arduino PKG does it by default. And so, let's see. Uh, yeah, so, I don't dare to, to <laughs> update to the newest version, but let's try 2.22.0. All right, so now Radio PKG shows you, oh, this is not very helpful. Uh, it shows you, again, for every uh, shell command it runs, it shows you the command. So if you would want to like burn Radio PKG with fire and never use it again, you can just like copy this command and use just this command. So it basically does what I was doing when I was doing this action, which is I looked at the diff, okay, what changed? Yeah, lots of, lots of stuff changed, oh, no good. Uh, also, it shows you which requirements changed between the version and the requirements of the file. So that's a really nice feature. You can see that some new requirements on Oslo were added and some requirements were bumped. Uh, so this is possibly what you were talking about, kind of, right? Uh, okay, so now it you can see what it does. It resets the local patches branch, it checks out, it rebases it, and now it this could be a destructive operation basic on your workflow. So it asks me if I want to push, push the new version. You can also uh, run RDO PKG in local operation, but by default it assumes that you're working with the, with the remote repos. It's something to consider to change in town PKG. So I don't want to push this, no. Yeah, it uploads new, it even uploads the, how is it, fed PKG upload to, to the Lucaside cache. Yeah. 
Oh, and my certificate now expired, so we can't. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> Disable that. Can be disabled. Uh, new yep. No new sources. Dash N. So uh, it is. So now I don't like what happened. So I'll just do. Yeah, and your PKG info. It gets Git ish. No, it's not. It tries to mimic kind of the Git interface. So here you can see. You can see what is running, what command, what are the parameters, what are the steps. These steps are, are, are actually ought to be idempotent. So you can define uh, the actions in Radio PKG. That's the, that's the uh, CLI and structure declaration I was talking about. It actually declares a series of steps. And if Radio PKG breaks in any one of those steps, uh, when you, you can just Radio PKG continue and it will rerun from that step. So that way you can do transaction-ish things. You can drop to shell and let the user fix it using his tools and then resume the operation instead of like trying to force to everything in your awesome tool. <laughs> so I found this very, very useful. Not sure if it really is, but it's like that. So I can earlier PKG abort this like you would in the git. Earlier PKG status. Yep, now action in progress. Let me try to rerun the action without bumping the sources. Ah, uh, no, that's wrong. Mm. No. All right, it worked actually, amazing. Okay, so let's see all that happened here. So it showed me the diff, the requirements diff, then it did some magics, then it did the rebase here, and actually if this rebase, this is what you would probably do manually, just literally the same thing. So if this rebase would fail, you would just use git to solve the rebase, as you would when not using RDO PKG. Once it is solved, you would do RDO PKG dash continue, and it would pick up from this and continue like it did. Uh, so it updates the spec file, the get source is, is not used. Mm. So there is the essential part, it's called update patches. From historical point of view, it was a script, a packaging script. <laughs> and now it's part of Radio PKG. This actually, um, this is the thing, the entity that introduced the patches branch, uh, like when it came to existence. Uh, it's because it was hard-coded in that script, like dash patches, and this is the script that actually exported the patches from the git patches branch to the to the disk git, as opposed to having them in the disk git as flat files. So this is the biggest change, and it all revolves around that and the possibilities this gives you. This basically means you can use git on your patches directly, so you want to do that anyway. So. Uh, it tells you there are two patches on top of 220, zero are excluded, you can exclude some, you can now, uh, this is actually external patch. Uh, someone, someone provided this, uh, there are some problematic patches, so some pro project need to filter out the problematic patches which should be excluded. This is also now possible thanks to external contributors. It shows you the patches that are on top and then, <coughs> and then it, it does all its, its funny stuff and here you can do the diff, uh, here you can see the final diff. So it changed the version to a correct version, it reset release. Uh, it removed the document search of the parameter, that's because I made the change locally from my local patches branch, and that patch is not in the actual up, like upstream or like. So it regenerates all the patches. So even though I added some like random weird patch here that shouldn't be there at all, it didn't care, it just deleted it and it uh, mirrored the patches that are in the patches branch. So. Uh, yeah, there is uh, there is a change log update to to if I if I for example wanted again to be more verbose in my change log I would just do uh, I don't know some some amazing <laughs> feature Again, I can do RDU PKG MN. 
and it updates the last patch file. So after running an RDU PKG action, you have just a new commit on your disk kit. It's this commit with everything that you would need to do for a long time to achieve. It depends. So this is the core functionality. Uh, I'm not sure if I have... Oh yeah, there's one more thing to show, which only, yeah, yeah. Last thing to show you, the advanced requirements management. So there is lots of manuals. Uh, RDO package has multiple manual pages. The manual is online. There is RDO packaging documentation. Should be kind of documented. So what you can do is actually, yeah, yeah. You can use various actions to inspect uh, Python requirements. So this is some bridge between Python and RPM requires. Uh, you can see what was added, changed, removed. And just like quickly look at this, I think you get what, what's the point. You can also query the packages across the, the RDO, this is RDO specific. You can, you can see what versions of packages are which, and in which repos. So this is also quite useful. And you can, this is the most brutal action, you can actually, uh, you, you can actually query for entire requirements file and see if these requirements are met across the distribution. So, ah, that's about it. There is much more like earlier specific functionality that like came into existence, now it's not needed anymore, so it's obsolete, maybe it will be needed one more. And so I would like to make this, what I just show you, the, the patches management functions. I would m like to make this uh, into pen PKG. That is why it should exist. That would be its main, like, it should be fairly small module just to do that. It should be nice to use. And so if you, if you like what you've seen, definitely, definitely join me on that. Astonishing revolution happening. So. Radio PKG is using GitHub. I'm I'm okay with the issues. At last, there it's not as slow as Bugzilla, right? So, so if you want something in Radio PKG, do use the GitHub issues. I really read them. Uh, if it's a bug that like I think it's breaking things, so not RFE. There are lots of RFEs, but should it be bug, I usually fix it within a week or so. So I hope to be a really fast upstream. I built RDU package in copper, so it's not a problem for me to build the package immediately once I get the fix. Uh, I also, I do a poke-driven development, so if you want me to do anything, you need to poke me, basically. Because lots of people are wanting lots of stuff, and lots of emails are sent, and lots of me meetings are held. But I'm not interested in that crap, I'm interested in getting shit done, so when someone really needs something, he pokes me. So if you really need something from RDU PKG, from me, just poke me. I'm on the RDO uh, IRC channel, Jay Ruzicka. Always happy to help. It's my like, I, it's my child, and I really like it. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not the greatest project ever, but you know, it's mine, <laughs> and it works. So that's it. That's finally the end. I can barely speak. Uh, I can barely speak more. So thank you for your attention. I hope this was useful at last in some regard to you. Uh, it's actually very. It's a very specific topic. Not many people are interested in packaging, and those who are are having their scripts, you know. As, <laughs> and so it's very few people, and so I think since it's so few people, we shouldn't duplicate effort. I think it should be like possible to, to um, settle on something like this and move forward together, like duplicating the effort. For me, I, for example, found the, the, the Fedora, Fedora update process too cumbersome. Like, uh, I understand. I understand that like Fedora, uh, as any distribution, wants some degree of stability. So uh, being able to update packages too fast would be against that. But for me, the process to update it's just like not cool. I don't. It's not a pleasant <laughs> thing for me. As opposed to building RDO PKG in copper, that's easy. I just like run my actually RD, I have RDO PKG uh, action to update RDO PKG. So just <laughs> I, I like write RDO PKG inception packaging inception. <laughs> And it's all done, and I don't need to do some weird processes and stuff like that. So if you're building some like process-free packaging uh, pipeline, maybe this is also for you. So that's all from me. And finally, there is RDO meetup after this presentation. Some cool, cool folks from our team. I don't know, sightseeing Berno, having beers. So if you're interested in hearing more from me or from them, feel free to join. And that's it.
Thank you for your attention. I have a question for you. Yeah, sure, questions. Uh, what is the best way to get into the Right now. Right now. Request. Request where? All right. So if you have any questions, fire away. <laughs> And the only person who kind of interacted gets the...
Vijko a mají tam stáhnout si ten tvůj enum. Ten malinký. Proto jsem to rozdělil na ty dva, jako, že teď jako úplný pro beginry, protože jako, mě překvapuje, že furt a furt a ty, jako no, nový lidi dorůstají, takže furt se najde někdo, pro, někdo, pro koho to je úplně nový. A pak jsem dělal ten jako advanced packet packaging, kde jsou prostě ty, ty jako, to bude jedna, jedna rada za druhou, nebo rada typy, jakože všechno je to někde v dokumentacích, ale takový to přehlídneš, jo, jo, to mě stačí a jdu dál, jo, a pak už se k tomu nikdy nevrátíš. Máš prezentace nějaký? Mám prezentace. Teďko prostě se nahrál na dnešní den. Tak. Povedlo se ti nějak rozdělit s potou, jo? Na dva díly, nebo... Ne, ne, ne. To jsem dělal úplně, úplně novou. Aha. Tak. Jestli chceš, tady máš vodu, minerálku. Vodu jsem si teď vzal, tady. Ale já ti bych rozdával. Já jsem právě do... Jo. To mně přijde právě, že to, to jsou takové věci, které jsou, které si sám jako už dohledáš. Jo, že se, taky já jsem přeskočil ten jako začátek, nebo ten střed, protože jako, když se naučíš ten Airpomobil, tak pak už jako spoustu věcí se dohledáš, ty nové věci, jako ty suggesty a tak, to už jako, protože musíš, jo, jako, nebo chceš. Ale, ale pak tam jsou takové věci, které prostě nikdy jsi nepotřeboval a vlastně je ani nepotřebuješ, ale když se o nich dozvíš, tak, tak jsou jako dobrý. Tak. Slides Saturdays. Hmm, ne, tohle nechci. Tak jestli mi dostali rozdělit do začátku, pak jestli to už ne. No, ta první byla hodně interaktivní. Ale když jsi dělal na tom speakerově, jestli jsi to rozkazal, nebo ne. Tam bylo dost dotazů jako v průběhu. Slides Saturday jich tam moc nemáte. Protože jsme zapomněli ty průběhy. První tři je požadavé, já jsem už poslal ne. Ten, ten teďka před tebou je neměl. Tak, dobře. Odmontovat. Bezpečně odebráno. Uh, jo, jo. Takže pro dnešek už hotovo s flaškou. Tak. Jakože už. No. Jo, počkej, a jak se. A jak to tady funguje? Kde jsou ty screeny? Takže notebook. No. A co tam? Jo, a je vidět. Je jo, znám. Vidět. Je to tady, a zároveň je to tady. To, co vidíš tady, tak je to tam. Jo, 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 takže tuhle chci vidět, takže a, když dám na F5, tak, to tady ještě. jo, 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 takže tady dám slideshow, a, slideshow settings, multiple display, to je preferences, kde to je? 
Teď ten malý je vypnutý. Což je oba dva, nebo ti stačí jeden? Jeden screen ti stačí? Jo, jo, jeden screen mi stačí. Značil se ten game, no to je pro display, proč to nevidím? Screen. Dupa, dupa. Multiple display. Co je to za nový restor? Skrytý. Tak si to udělám takhle. No, tak to nepřeba, no. Tady to, tady to vidíš taky, no. To je bo, moc to neotočí. Nebo jo, otočí. To je to Přišel někde na konferenci, že tam měli tady tohle ukazovátko a že říkal, to je co, to je to, jako, to, je to abych přecházel mezi slidama. Jo, 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 ale to nepožijte, to, to nikomu nefunguje. Jako, tady všichni, jako i lidi, co mají Windowsy, tak prostě, to jako nikdy to nerozjel. Víš to, Takhle to jako z toho Windows střičil to do půlbočka. Jo, jo, funguje, děkuji. <laughs> Fedora rule, <růle>, to vlastně. <laughs> Nic, žádná instalace, vlastně. <laughs> Zprak. Já jsem si 
Jako co? Jako, na konci to stejně pak už potřebovat nebudeme. Když začínáme o půl? Začínáme přesně o Yeah. 
napíšeme no, a já jsem se říkal právě několik, že kdyby byly nějaké otázky, a třeba víc lidí, co s tím vůbec jako hands jako on, takže on může je, a to můžeme říct, že je třeba nevím. Já jsem se napsal takhle extra, protože to tam je takhle přehlednější. Jo, 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 určitě.
Jak tím Borchu začíná, tak jsem přišel. Tak jo. Funguje to. Ne, já jsem si právě říkal, že se to nesmí naučit. Teď když balíčku Jsi vzal tady ten beč malý. Thank you. 